Hey guys, so welcome back. This is a 93 year old radio and we're going to see if we can fix this thing. I have no idea if it works. Uh, we're going to find out. This is a Philco Model 20. I'll get into this in just a minute. One of the things that's really interesting about it is this is not a super heterodyne radio. This is pre-super heterodyne. So this is a tuned radio frequency type receiver. A TRF set it's called. And they used to have three independent knobs where the operator would tune each of the RF stages in series to try to boost a weak signal, then take that signal and boost it louder, and take that signal and boost it louder, basically. But it was, it was really difficult to deal with, and this is one of the reasons Super Het sets came along. But this is prior to Super Heterodyne. This radio is 93 years old. So one of the reasons we can know this is I know what years that the Model 20 was produced. Uh, the other thing is, is that this is the deluxe model. You can tell because it has these columns on the side. Okay, there was a Model 20 that didn't have the columns, and so that was the Model 20. This is the Model 20 Deluxe. This is not the 20A. It was not modified to be able to handle 25 hertz uh, power coming in. So this runs off 50 to 60, I believe. And the other thing is, is that, and I won't, tell, won't be able to tell until I really clean it well, but I don't think that the inlay here is the maple inlay which dates this to being the older version of this so the older version of this was in 1930 when it first came out i think they continue to make it to through 31 uh, and those later models they had a, a a maple inlay here so this is the older model that's why i say this one's 93 years old okay so uh let's take a quick gander at the the front of it as you can see the grill cloth's got holes in it that's not unusual we'll see what we can do about that later uh, it's got three knobs I have no idea if any of this works, so let's find out together. I believe the way this is, is this is on-off, this is volume, and of course this is tuning. So we'll see if the on-off will move. Okay, we got a click. So that's the on-off switch. This should be the volume control. And that seems to turn. I don't see any decals here identifying, uh, you know, on-off volume. It may not have ever had it. This is the tuning control. Uh, I'm not going to try real hard on this. It, it budges. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to force this. Uh, this one doesn't have an eye or a shadow meter or anything like that. It's just you're going to be tuning it by ear. Okay, let's take a look around the back of this thing. It's pretty scratched up as you can expect for something of this age. And let's take a real look at what we have in the back side. So we've got dust. And we've got some wires here. So let's dig out what we have. This is as I received it. Oh, so this came to me from a friend. Uh, it belonged to his uncle. And his uncle acquired this decades and decades ago and intended to work on it and get it work in and just never did. You know, that sort of thing happens and he passed away. And so uh, I ended up acquiring it and here it is. So here's our power cord. Um, this is two conductor. And then the spool of wire that was used for the external antenna. Uh, we can see from this cord here, this is the cord for the uh, uh, speaker, which is here. Look at the number of conductors that are in here. So that tells us that this is a electromagnet uh, speaker, uh, electrostatic that or is it electrodynamic? I always get it mixed up. But it doesn't have a permanent magnet in it. The magnetism of the for the magnetic for the uh, speaker is driven from current that comes out of the power supply and then drives and creates an electromagnet here, electromagnetic field that then the speaker uses to drive it. So the other two are for the audio output transformer that then goes into the voice coil. Uh, we have some empty sockets here. This is for the rectifier. We'll get into the circuit in a little bit. These are the audio output tubes as has a push-pull configuration of 71 A's. Uh, we'll take a look at those in, in, the, in a bit. Um, it has, I don't know how you, well you can see it, there's a tube shield here and inside of here are the three uh, radio, the, the three um, RF amplifier tubes that are in here and they each are communicating to an RF coil. We'll look at those in a minute. And then the very back, back here, I don't know if you can even see it, that's the uh, first audio output tube. We have a three gang tuning condenser, and that's for each of the stages of the radio frequency. 
and uh, let's take a look at the schematic on this. Uh, back here is the power transformer, and then we have this is the built main filter cap. Okay, because it's near the near the rectifier tube, right? And here you can see where it says it's a model 20. Okay. Before I take this out of the case, let's talk about the circuit a little bit. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, if you can't see it well, I'll, I'll blow it up and edit it, of course. Okay, so basically you've got a three stages. So these are the three stages that used to be that operators would tune each of these stages separately. So here you have this antenna signal comes in. It goes into the grid of the first tube. That then you would tune the circuit to where you get the best response around a certain frequency range that they would feed into the next one through the next RF transformers one here, another one here, you repeat it here and then you have another RF transformer, you repeat it here and so it used to be that people would have to tune these three individually, they would have like markings on it you know, scale to one to a hundred, they'd write them down and use that to try to tune their stations. Uh, Super Heterodyne got rid of all of that uh, but this is this is pre super het. So uh, one of the things that they did do though is they made it to where they are tuning together all at once. So that's why these are all on a single shaft. And in order to do that, each one of these is individually trimmed. As you can see right here, we've got tunable trimmer capacitors or patterns that allow us to adjust the total capacitance. So these are basically working in together to do that. This last uh, RF tube has a circuit attached to it that creates a detector and then uh, that would convert the modulated signal into an audio signal. Then it goes into a first audio tube that then goes into a first audio output tube that then sends out of phase signal through this off the off the center tap of the secondary into the push-pull configuration of the 71A's. Okay then these both feed into the audio output transformer that then feeds the voice coil and then here is your um, your uh, field coil that's here. Here is a filter choke and then here is our massive power transformer that's here. Alright, so what we're going to do is basically you've got an 80 as the rectifier full wave these are 24's, that's a 27 and as I mentioned that's a pair of 71A's so we got four, six, seven tubes. Okay, so, sorry about the shadows on this. So as you know, what I'm probably going to do on this is I'll remove the rest of the tubes. I'll take the chassis out of the case. I'll remove the rest of the tubes. I'm going to inspect it to see if it looks like anything got lit on fire or anything. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and check this transformer to see if we've got any blown windings. As you can see, there's no fuses here. So if, let's take, for example, um, one of these filter capacitors down here went to a dead short, as we've seen can happen. Uh, the current could run away on this thing and we could burn up a winding. So what we'll do is I'll have everything disconnected and I'll go in and check continuity. Uh, for example, between 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 7 and 8 and so forth and see if all these windings are all there. Then what I'll do is I'll put in the 80 full wave rectifier bring the power up very slowly and an isolation transformer currently current limit this but there won't be any load on it because none of the, none of the, the um, tubes will be in so conduction, conduction won't start and then what we'll do is we'll look at see what kind of voltages we get out of this make sure we are getting voltages and then see if they seem to comply with what's in the service information on this radio and we'll do that then if we make it through all of that I'll check a few things to make sure of anything else uh, we need to look at we'll check to see that filter choke is okay. We'll check uh, the field coil for sure. Uh, maybe check these transformers here. Uh, but then at that point we'll say let's go for this. So we'll put the tubes back in. We'll bring the voltage up very slowly and we'll see what it behaves like and we'll see what happens. Um, and then we'll take it from there. So that's the plan. Hang on if you think this sounds interesting. And we're going to get into this thing in just a moment. The other thing you'll notice is that the arch is missing here. And you know it's it's tempting for people to pick these things up by that front arch. It looks like a hand, you know, handy handhold, but this thing is so fragile through here, it just busts that out. You have to always pick this up from the base. Okay. And as a result of that, like I say, you can see how how thin this this plywood is on top, is is that 
at some point or another this was handled and they had a little bit of a blowout here where it pulled that through and we lost some lost some uh, some uh, veneer there maybe we'll see if we can do something about that but one thing at a time right okay so the next thing I'm probably going to do is take this out of the case start inspecting the bottom and then we'll go on with the uh, continuity checks of some of the uh, the coils so hang on we're gonna get started another thing about these is is that some of you might have heard the term tombstone radio this is not a tombstone uh, actually the tombstones had flat tops on them is the way it's termed um, this is what is termed a cathedral style design but um, it's interesting to know that at the time when these were being produced neither one of those terms was being used um, this was called by Philco a baby grand is what this was called and it was called that because they had a larger model much larger model that would maybe have like a phonograph built into it and those would be the grands uh, but this was a baby grand that's radio only and uh, we'll see if we can get the knobs off without damaging things So we got the box out. It's actually in pretty good condition. It's not really dirty. Definitely needs some glue up. Um, from what I can see, the speaker cone, it looks okay. We'll find out about that soon. Set that aside. Okay, so now we finally got a look at the chassis here. Let's take a closer look here, huh? Definitely got a lot of dust on it. We've got some pine needles, but I don't see any sign that anybody tried to make too serious of a nest out of it. Let's to clean this out a little bit before we do too much on it. Okay. This has gone curly crusty on it. It's got a bulb here for backlighting the dial. Hey, what's going on here? Is it supposed to be like that? We don't have a bell on this side of the transformer. Got one here. There's a screw here. Screw here. But that looks like we're into the uh, E and I plate there. I'm concerned that half this transformer, someone's been in here, I guess. How long ago? How long ago? I don't know. You can see where parts of this has been chewed on. Now we have to pay really close attention to what's going on here with this transformer. Okay, should we take a look at the underside and see if we can see any signs of something's gone seriously wrong here? Here's the uh, tube shield with the, uh, the bulb layout. Nice. You didn't, normally would never see this unless you pulled this out of the housing. Very nice. Okay, let's take a look at the underside. I guess I'll go back to the back. First look. Okay. Oh dear. Someone's been in here. Look at this. Right? These two items. Can you see that okay? 
Oh, sorry, I'm gonna get you back into into the shot here. Look at this. Did somebody give up? <laughs> this reminds me of that that Emerson we did where you saw with this lead sticking out of this thing like somebody just gave up. Didn't didn't trim it and didn't do anything else, just stopped. So that is a 0.25 at 400 volts, 0.25 at 400 volts, 0.5 at 400 volts. The resistors look original. Let's look at the BC. I don't see any burned up places. This doesn't look right. Uh, this is from the transformer. Yeah, we're going to need to check the transformer out. We'll also check the BC coil, see how it looks. Okay, so what we got is we've got something went on here. I think somebody's been working on the transformer. I wouldn't be surprised if something's blown. Uh, but there is three new, four new capacitors. This is kind of hanging in the air. Kind of how you doing, right? I don't know if these have been done. Let's see, I see a wire still going in to the inside there. So that one probably still has its capacitor in it. Uh, I don't know about this one. Can't tell. Actually, it's pretty open looking, isn't it? Okay, uh, let's stay the plan. Let's go check out that, uh, well, we'll pull the tubes out, and then we'll also check out the transformer. Oh my goodness, we've got, I don't know if you can see this. Let's zoom you in. Okay. I don't know if you can see. So there's the bottom of the transformer. Can you see the solder blobs that are here? They've been there went one. Another one here. I don't know if you can see that. And look at the look what's going on here. Yeah. I'm a little concerned about what we see here. So we'll get onto that and we'll check to see what we have left there. Okay, let me get some stuff set up and uh get on to that. Okay, it looks like we can just about say this story is over. Um, set up here in ohms and first thing we'll check is the primary on the transformer. We can get that from the actual socket here uh, instead of going to three and four. Now just so you know, I, I can see that here. The way these are numbered is it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is those are the connections here and they correspond to what's here which is the same as what we see on this. Alright so just looking at prong to prong on the power cord we're open. Uh, flipping the on off switch back and forth doesn't help. So let's forget about the cord for a minute and we want to go to three and four. So here is, let's make sure this is connected. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so three and four. Well, that was a quick project. The primary is completely open on this. So this thing has got a short in it, burned up the primary of the transformer. That's why you got to use uh, fuses on these sets, particularly the ones that have a transformer, because now that that transformer is gone, there's not much we can do with it. Um, I can take a look to see if uh, there's a disconnected wire on the side, or maybe that's what somebody did, was took the bell housing off to see if there was uh, something they could do, and then they just gave up, and who knows where the other half of the bell housing is. Uh, but yeah, that's done. See what we can get from, we'll just go down the list, but that looks at, that is open. Okay, 
Let's try one to two. So there's one, and there's two. One to two is there. Get Seven to eight. Seven to eight. Point four. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. Point two. 9 to 12. 363, 360. Okay, and just one more time, 3 to 4. 3 to 4. Nothing. Completely sure. They wanted to give me something. Look at there. I am getting something. Why is it not working my grabber? Okay. Holy cow, we got something. I don't know what's going on with that terminal in there, the solder job maybe, but we're at five and a half ohms. <laughs> okay. Five and a half ohms. Well, well, there you go. Transformer is actually okay. Jeez. Uh, we need to check what's going on in here with some of these solder points. But yeah, so let's see. Three to four. I did that right, right? One, two, three to four. Nothing there. But go here. Yeah. Just a lot of junk on that terminal. It's dirty. Transformer's fine. Okay, cool. All right, let's do the rest of this. Let's uh, look at across the the filter choke. Comes off a ten. Be this lead here. Filter choke is good. Three hundred and eighty. Fuel coil. It's moving. 3.2K, that sounds about right. So just to recap, in case I want to just cut all this out, I went through and I've tested everything in here like I talked about. Everything looks like it's good to go on to the next step. Uh, let me, with one big exception, so let me kind of walk my way, walk it through here with you. The transformer is, looks good. All the windings are there, all the resistances are there, all the center taps are there. So the transformer looks good to go. Uh, the uh, filter choke is there and it has good resistance. The field coil is there and has good resistance. The audio output transformer primary is there and good. I didn't check this one, but I'm sure it's pretty good. So the primary is good. And then on the audio input transformer, uh, both primary and secondary are good. On the BC resistor, which is here, uh, it is all fine. It's all there, all the values are there and they're all what they should be. These filter choke here uh, set up around this, this is kind of a modified Pi filter. You've got a filter choke here and you've got these three capacitors here that are represented here. They're all bad, as you would imagine. Uh, so before I put in tubes and do conduction, I'm probably going to need to replace these capacitors. Uh, no sense in possibly damaging a transformer. So, um, but what I can do first though is I can go ahead and pull the rest of these tubes out so I won't have to worry about any conduction. Uh, I can put some power into the primary and see what kind of voltages we get out of some of these locations without the 80, without the rectifier in. And then we put the rectifier in and see what kind of voltage we get out of there. But before I do that, I'm probably going to need to do the caps. But uh, anyway, that's the plan. And now that we've got this kind of done, I think the rest of this I can now have room on on my, on my bench, which is good because it's starting to get dark. Okay, so we're back in here at the bench. Um, I've gone ahead and done a lot of checking. Uh, all the resistors that I can measure are bad. They're quite high. Uh, the capacitors that are in here uh, that were replaced, 
I'm probably just going to go ahead and replace those as well um, while I'm at it. All of these we know uh, are bad. They're all shorted, basically. Uh, this is also no good. These are all fine. Um, I'm going to turn my attention to the transformer because one of the things we can said we can do now, right, is we can go in and, and take a look at, focus, focus, there we go, take a look at these windings, put some voltage here, see if we're getting the right voltages out. Um, I'm a little concerned about what I'm looking at here because it may be that it's been quite a while since this has had any voltage applied to it but that doesn't mean it's kind of safe to have voltage applied to it now. So a while ago I was looking down in here at these connections. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it but there's a um, a lead here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll give you a backing for it. Where the insulation is coming off. All right, It's one of those rubber wires that has brittle insulation. So one of the things I might do is, is, you know, for the sake of testing, is put some things in there to make sure that I have insulation and good in good stead. But uh, let me remind you about the other side. It's heavy. So as we look around this side of the transformer, it's missing this bell housing. A bell, or you gonna call it? It's not a trap. So, uh, let's see, let me get you readjusted here. There is some problems with the wiring here, as you can see. Okay, I'm a little concerned about zapping power right to this right away because the way these leads are. Uh, if I were to put a bell on here, you can see that might be a bit of a problem. So I think that these leads on this transformer need to have a little bit of attention. Um, all over the place. So I think what I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time. Uh, I'm probably going to take the other side of the bell off and just get a good look at the wiring on the transformer. Uh, take this off here and make sure I don't have any shorts or anything or something that ought to be insulated a little better. Even at this stage all I do is put some electrical tape on it uh, just before I go any further. Uh, as you know my process is is that I'll start first off with just getting the radio to work, kind of a resurrection, right? Then once we know everything works, then I'll spend time going in and replacing bad components and hopefully improve the the performance of it. Uh, but until that time, I like to try to make sure the thing operates first. So I think what I'm going to do before I put voltage to the transformer is I'm just going to spend a little bit of time to go through and make sure that I don't have any shorts taking place. Um, and then, of course, uh, I'll probably do something more permanent once we get around to doing the final repair on this. So anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to do first. So uh, I'll, I'll bring you back after we get some of this stuff opened up. We'll just take a look at how, how it looks before we put power to it. Incidentally, you can also see that I've cleaned the top of the chassis. I, I guess I forgot to turn the camera on, but you didn't miss much. I just did compressed air and went over it with a brush and tried to remove most of the dust that was on here. Okay, so it's nothing pretty, that's for sure. This is just temporary. But this is just so I can not sweat out, you know, exposed wires shorting off against other things. Uh, so uh, we will move forward now that we can get this kind of packed in here and out of the way. All right, let me keep going. Out. Oops. Okay, transformer's already trying to come out, come loose here. Let's see what it looks like. It's got like a fish paper backing on it. Because, yeah, there's wires exposed. Yeah, 
I think the best thing to do is is to leave this together now because that fish paper that's back in there is kind of like a piece of cardboard. Let me turn this radio off. It's kind of going across all the back side of the shell. So I'm going to leave that attached because now that I can see even if the insulation is off, it's got it's got a way to make sure it's okay. All right, so let me put this back together and then uh, we'll proceed. Okay, so I went through and double checked all of the uh, posts here and checked to see if there was any shorts to chassis and make sure that all the windings are all still like they're supposed to be and it all little, still looks good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put, start putting some voltage to the input on the, on the uh, primary of this and start observing voltages coming out of here. They won't be in accordance with anything that's on any spec sheet because we don't have any tubes in so there's no conduction so there's no load. Uh, but at least we can make sure that we're getting you know voltages out uh, from these areas here. Uh, this is not in, and neither is any of the other tubes, so there should be no conduction. In fact, the uh, the bulb, interesting enough, the bulb isn't on the schematic anywhere, but I know it goes onto the A circuit like a filament. Anyway, uh, let's get that set up. I'll bring you right back, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, ready to go for first power up on this. Don't try any of this at home. Uh, what I've got set up here is I've got an isolation transformer back here, just so you know. I'm on an isolation transformer. I've got a variac so I can bring up the voltage very slowly on this. I've got a dim bulb tester back here, which is on the bulb setting, so I'm going to be running all of the current through that light bulb, which is part of the uh, current limiting on this. I've got a test panel back here that's got a 1 amp fuse on it. We're going to watch all the amps coming in on this meter here. This is 1 amp full scale. I'm expecting it to be about mid scale. I'm really only using this to make sure that the current doesn't run away from us when I'm looking at the input voltage. So this would be the voltage that I have coming in from the Variac. And this thing is, is designed for about 115 volts, so I'll probably stay around there at the, at the max. But I may not go up all the way. Since my voltages are not loaded down, the voltages will come up higher than they would normally at that input voltage, and I don't need to overdo it, any of that. There should be very little current flowing other than the reactants of the transformer and maybe a few a few small circuits, but we won't have any conduction. All right, so I think we're about ready to go. I've got my power coming in here through these red and black leads. Uh, they come through the uh, ammeter and then they come into here and they go into terminals three and four. Okay, we are ready to go. Let me get the right chart out here. Okay, so this will show me what coils are hooked up where. Okay, let's uh, bring up the voltage very slow. We've got the Variac all the way down. Voltage is going to come up. We're going to watch it come up here, and we're also going to watch for current happening here. There's 10 volts, and there's 20 volts. Nothing happening on current. I wouldn't. I'm not surprised. 30 volts. There's 40 volts. Now let me just see if we're getting anything out of any of the windings here. All right, so we should be getting between three and four. We got our input voltage. Let's see. And then let me see. When, let me get this set up. I need this to go to. Let me go back to the gripper. Okay, so for example, between 1 and 2, let's see if we're getting, let's look for higher voltage. Let's look between 12 and 9. So here's 12, and here is 4, and here's 9. Look at that. So we're only putting in 40 volts, and we're getting 255 volts out of the uh, high voltage uh, secondary. So let me clip this on. Let me uh, go on up to one of the other ones. So let's see, one to two. This is not a very high voltage. This is just filament voltage. Let's see if we're getting a re response. Okay, we're up to almost a volt there. Uh, let's go to seven and eight. Uh, let's see, seven and eight, right? Okay, good, we're getting something there. And nine to 10, let's see, nine, Right, 9 and 10. Looking good. Okay, let's bring the voltage on up. 
We're still not getting any current to speak of. So there's 50 volts, 60 volts. I'm starting to get a little movement on the reactants here. Okay, I'm going to do is hook this up for the high voltage output. So this will be 9 and 12. So here is 12 and 9, right? Okay. Find a good way to get a connection here, if I can. All right, 60 volts in, 377 volts out. 70 volts. 80 volts. I'm starting to get a very small movement here. We're up to about probably 100 milliamps. So there's 90 volts. So it looks like our transformer is doing okay. 100 volts, we're not quite to 200 milliamps. Lost my probe on 9. Okay. Looking good. Let's see, that was 100 volts. So here's 110. We're a little over 0.2 milliamps. And we're at uh, 676 volts. So 650 volts is supposed to be the fully loaded voltage for that circuit. So I'm not really going to go up any higher than that. But I think we're showing that the, uh, the major high voltage secondary is uh, okay. Now let me just check between uh, 6 and 12. Let's see. 5, 6, here's 6. Okay, that's good. So that was the center tap. Let's go check out 1 to 2. Okay, that's 5 volts. That should be basically our filament voltage of, of um, 6 volts, I guess. So 1 to 2, we're getting almost 5 volts at 100 volts in. So we crank that up, we might get to 6. All right, so let's see. That's 1 to 2. Let's try 1 to 6. Make sure that's connected. One to six, five, six. Looking good, OK. Uh, let's go 7 and 8. 7 and 8. That's the C voltage. Okay, we're at 3.5 volts. And then we go 10 to 11. Let's see, let's also do 5 to 7. 5 to 7. Center tap, okay, it's good. And then we want to go 10 to 11. Let's see, 10 to 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, and that's going to end up being the filament voltage for the rectifier, which is where the B plus is going to come out. So that all looks good. Transformer looks okay. What do you want to do now? Shall we put in... Uh, we put in 80 and see how we do. Um, before I do that, I need to disconnect uh, this filter network, okay? Because it's it's just not going to be. These are all shorted. Um, let me see what I'm going to do with that. I may go ahead and just disconnect it, or I've got the capacitors. Maybe I'll build a little network and go ahead and put it in. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll test that in just a minute. Hang on, I got I got to dig out a number 80 because it didn't come with the radio. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, this filter capacitor box is a big, it's a big thing on the top here, right? It's this big animal here. 
Uh, I'm not going to probably bother depotting that or anything like that, but I need to disconnect all the leads that are on here and hook up new capacitors. Uh, so all of these posts that I have here are not going to be usable. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, there's four sheet metal screws that are holding that box on. Okay, so what I've done is I've removed two of these and I was able to put a number four screw through the hole where the sheet metal screw went. And I've used that to attach two of these three post terminal strips. This has six terminals, so we now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Five is a dummy terminal that other things hook up to. It's just a way to connect things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one by one these wires from here over to here and then install the new capacitors onto here and then that'll that'll be the replacement for this. So I'm going to get started on that. Okay, I've got the old filter capacitor completely disconnected and I've rewired all the lines up to the uh, terminal strips I've installed here. And so once again, it'll be where this was one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Anyway, the next thing to do is uh, put the capacitors in and uh, I'll get them in and then we'll uh, look at maybe going for putting in the AV rectifier and see what we can get. Okay, so I got all the capacitors in. Uh, like I said, they're positioned uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, this is floating for right now. I'll change that out later. So there's the capacitors all in place, replacing all the, capa all the caps that were in here and all this wiring replaces all that wiring that was here. And so this is done. Uh, the only thing I, I failed to mention a little while ago is that, let me back up just a little bit. Something kind of interesting, the way the transformer was wired is, come on, focus. Ten and eleven were reversed that I found when I came over here. That's not a twelve. That's 0.2 ohms. Um, but ten and eleven were swapped as far as what went to the filter choke versus this filament connection on the uh, tube eighty socket. Uh, so I've corrected that. That should be an eleven. That should be a ten. Uh, that does throw off phase, but I don't think it's going to affect anything that we're seeing here. This is full wave rectifier, and it's not like we have a sync circuit or anything like that. But uh, anyway, uh, I think we're ready to now put in tube 80 and we'll see if we're getting voltage out of the power supply other than the ones we've already checked. So the main one we're going to be looking for, I think, is going to be coming right here. Uh, D be coming out of here. And D is connected to a capacitor slot either 4 or 6. And I can pick that up right here. That's 4. And the white cable goes across and connects it to six. I actually connect to six there. And that would give me the output of D. Okay, so that's what we're going to check to see if our uh, power supply is working. I've got a, a Filco 80. Uh, I've written on here that this one is weak. I've actually got another one that measures strong, but uh, I want to do my initial testing with a weak one. Okay, let me put this in. 80 is in. Okay, and we'll be looking for measuring the voltage here. This will be DC voltage out of the rectifier. And uh, I've got negative hooked up here. All right, I think we're ready to go. This is the input voltage once again. This will be the current. We'll be watching it come up, and it will come up this time. I think it's where you can see that a little better. It's a little bit better. Okay, so once again, I'm expecting the current to be probably up here somewhere but we'll see all right I think we're ready all right here we go voltage it's all the way down here we go 10 20 30 40 50 I'm getting current moving very little I'm almost to 100 milliamps uh, we're getting DC out 16 Sorry, 60 volts, 90 volts, and once again, we don't have any um, load on this, so it makes sense that at a relatively low voltage, we would still be getting a high, a high voltage, and that's DC, so we're getting any AC out of it. Nope. 
that filter is doing its job. 100 volts. I think that's plenty out of the B+. Plus. Oh yeah, the rectifier is going for sure. Okay. So I think we got a working power supply. All right, so since we're getting a good performance out of the power supply with a rectifier in, what do you want to do? You want to uh, try putting some tubes in and see if we get something happening? I think it'd be okay to do it. Uh, let me get that set up. So I've been doing some poking around to find out what's going on with the power cord. And uh, here is this lead that does not go through the switch down here. This one right here. And it connects down here. Okay, so that, can you see it? Down here at the bottom. Down here. So that makes contact. Let me move you down a little bit. Okay. So yeah, this one makes contact here. Okay. So now I'm going to switch the plug over to the other terminal. So now I come over here to position three and not getting anything. That's the one that goes through the on off switch. Okay. So that's off, and that's on. So I followed this up, and I pulled this insulation back, and you can see that this is not soldered. It's looped on there, but never soldered. This sleeve was pushed all the way up, not soldered. But the bad news is I'm still not getting continuity. So I pulled this sleeve back as far as I can kind of get it without forcing anything. And if I can probe in here... Uh, let me see. Let me get my head in here. Okay. Okay. So there's a problem with the switch, and it wasn't even soldered in. So this switch, I wonder if it's been replaced. But anyway, there's a problem with the on-off switch. I want to take it out and do some poking around with it, so you can find out what's wrong with it. Okay. Well, so what I've done is I've reflowed the solder on this connection here. It was all crystalline looking and so forth, and it definitely made a a difference a while ago. There you go. It's going through and here. So it's making contact now going into the switch, but coming out of the switch, I'm getting no sign of life at all. It's also kind of concerning is, is that this rivet that holds this switch stack together is not manufactured correctly here. It looks like it's been either didn't go in all the way or it's been removed. I think you can see that. So it's standing proud, and the the part that gets flattened out, clenched on this side, isn't even here. So I don't know if this was defective, or if somebody tried to take this apart and fix it. I don't know. Uh, in order to diagnose the radio, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the switch, and um, and that'll be just something on the list that we need to do if we ever get around to restoring this. So anyway, I want to bypass the switch. And then I'm going to be able to use the cord again. Okay, I'm just J-hooking these leads together until I can get the switch fixed, placed. But otherwise, right now it's it's deleted. Okay. All right. So now we should be able to swap to the other outlet of the plug. And now this one should light up. Okay. I think that the power cord is reasonably okay for doing for testing since I've got it all on isolation transformer and all that. So I'm going to leave and use the uh, existing power cord on here. And uh, we'll worry about what to do about this uh, on off switch later. All right.
Okay. And that's not touching anything. All right, good. Okay, guys, we're ready to go for first power up with everything in it. We've got all the tubes in, back in it. We've got uh, the three RF amplifier tubes, the amplifier tube, the two audio output tubes, the 71As. We got the rectifier in. Uh, we bypassed the switch because it's uh, not working. The tube shield is not on. I've got the field coil hooked up here so that we should have a complete circuit. So uh, unfortunately I can't get you to where you can see the voltages and the currents right now, but uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and go on with the test. I can watch it myself. And I'll call out what we're looking at. Uh, I'm not going to go up high voltage to start with. I'm just going to see if we can get some plate voltages where they ought to be and, and so forth, see if they're starting to look right. All right, so here we go. I'm going to turn the variacus all the way down. Power coming up. And we're at 10 volts. And we're at 20 volts. And we're at 30 volts. I know you don't see anything right now. 40 volts. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is probably end up injecting a signal since there's no antenna and this thing is not wired up. I'm just going to try to see if we get glow on, glow on tubes and all that good stuff. Uh, put the dial lamp back in. Uh, see if I can see anything glowing on it. It does have continuity through it. I don't see anything glowing on it yet. We're at 40 volts. Let's go up. 50 volts. And we're pulling uh, almost 200 milliamps. That's a good sign. I am getting glow on the bulb. I am getting glow on the pilot light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of it and I'll put it in the video so you can see it glowing there. Okay. Okay, we're going to go up to 60 volts. I'm just a little over 200 milliamps. 70 volts in. Uh, we're seeing 136 there. Uh, I'm pulling 320 milliamps. Okay, let's go up to 90 volts. There's 90. I think that plate that I'm on at full voltage is supposed to be about 250 volts. So that's not too bad. I'm definitely getting glow on the dim bulb and I'm at uh, 450 milliamps. So there's 100 volts. I'm pulling about a half an amp. It's 105 volts. I'm doing about 550 milliamps. So that is the plate of the second RF tube right there. 222. The plate of the detector, which is this third one. Okay, that's low. That should be about 35 volts. Coils popped. I don't know. Getting the right voltage there. Nothing on the other side of that coil. That should go up to here. Yeah, that's coil is suspect. This one. Seems to be doing okay. I think. Yeah, 220. Does this one have anything on it? About 100. Getting something out of the speaker. That's good. Did I try a signal? 
Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've gone ahead and turned the voltage up all the way to a little, it's, it's about 115, which is about where it's supposed to be. I'm pulling 0.6 amps, and uh, I just want to do a quick check of going through capacitor. And what I've got is I've got the frequency generator up here, and I've set the tuning condenser to be between 1200 and 1400 kilohertz, which is where you adjust the trimmers, the patterns that are on the tuning condenser. Right, but what I'm going to do now is just see if I can pick up something coming right in from the antenna terminal at full voltage and see how it goes. Come on. That, and now I'm going to sweep here, meaning just swing this around. There it is. So what I'm doing is I've got a couple of peaks there, so I'm just swinging the, swinging this back and forth. Okay, that right there is at 12.49. It's just the way I have the tuning condenser set, but it's good to see I'm getting something through. There we go. That's good. Now I get the volume turned all the way up, and it drops off pretty quick. I'm not sure that our volume control is good. We'll just have to see. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause this here to make that the, uh, let's make this part one uh, ending right here, and uh, we'll see how we do next going forward. Uh, we've done quite a bit on this 93-year-old uh, radio. Uh, we've been playing it pretty careful. We don't want to damage anything with it. We've uh, checked out the transformer, made sure it was okay, even though it's been kind of partly taken apart. But we've got it stabilized, and it seems to have all its coils, and it seems to be functioning just fine. That was good to see. We've checked out a number of items in the circuit, and we've had a provisional power-up. And, uh, you know, we're actually getting a, a signal through. It's uh, We've got the signal generator up on high, and we've got the volume control turned all the way up. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have a problem with volume control or not. We'll just have to see. And uh, we know that all the resistors and all the capacitors need to be changed and check out some other items that are in here. And uh, we'll see if we be able to get this thing to actually receive a signal and uh, you know, get a, get a station. It'd be really interesting to see. So anyway, that's it for this part. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Stick around for part two when it comes along, and I'll see you then. Thanks a lot, guys.